Good to be here this morning. We're on lesson number 12 out of the book. The King Paid the Debt of Sin, August 22nd, 2021. Text is Matthew 27, 26 through 66. And the focus is Matthew 27, 26 through 31, 39 through 44, and 46 through 50. Key verse is Matthew 27, 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. This is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The application is the student will conclude that Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, gave himself to be the sacrifice for his sins. For the student's sins. Yeah, I started thinking about that as soon as I said that. It's for our sins. He didn't sin. For the student's sins is what he's referring to. Yeah. All right, seeking the context. Once again, I usually say this, if y'all got something to say, just don't be afraid to stop me. I don't catch a lot, so I learn a lot from more, I learn more from teaching than studying. Seeking context. In obedience to the commands of Jesus at the Last Supper, church members periodically gather together to observe the Lord's Supper. Jesus told his church to remember him and his sacrifice by eating unleavened bread and drinking the juice of crushed grapes, which is mentioned in Luke twenty two nineteen. When church members observe this ordinance worthily, it can be a very powerful experience. Certainly, there is nothing magical about the bread or juice, but I do love both. <coughs> but so somberly remembering the broken body and shed blood of Jesus should fill the member Fill the member with great gratitude for everything Jesus Christ did on behalf of lost sinners. Today's text should be difficult to read, but at the same time should inspire thanksgiving springing from our hearts to God for our salvation. Jesus had been betrayed by Judas, abandoned by his disciples, falsely accused, and tried by the San Sanhedrins, and denied by Peter. After these shame relit religious trials, the Sanhedrin and the Caiaphas decided to push through with an attempt to get the Roman authorities to execute Jesus as a criminal. When the sun rose, the mob brought Jesus to Governor Pilate and told him that Jesus claimed to be the king of the Jews and told people not to pay taxes to Caesar. Pilate tried to passed judgment off to Herod when he found out Jesus was a Galilean. But Herod could not find a reason to find him guilty, so sent Jesus back to Pilate in Luke 22, 6-13. Pilate did not find a reason to have Jesus executed. He made a feeble <clears throat> attempt to release Jesus by asking the crowd whether they wanted him to release Jesus or a notorious criminal named Barabbas for his annual ritual of releasing a criminal. Pilate, going against law and order, against his wife's advice, and against his own assessment, released a murderer named Barabbas to roam free. When he asked what should be done with Jesus, the crowd who days before shouted Hosanna when Jesus entered the city now shouted for Jesus to be crucified. Pilate claimed personal innocence in what happened next, illustrated by washing his hands, but the crowd willingly claimed credit for the shedding of Jesus' blood, even offering to make their children... Cul How'd you say that? Culpable. Culpable. I have it right down here below, but I couldn't read my handwriting. And his death in Matthew 27, 25. Today we will see the tremendous pain and suffering Jesus endured for our salvation. You go ahead and look off to the left there. We're going to hit on the question to ask, and then we'll be reading down below at the verses it has marked. Why is it important to re revisit the events of Calvary off? It's a reminder, so we don't forget. The Lord's Supper is about. Yep. Let's do as often as we want to. Remembrance of Him. Body is broken and blood is shed. Yeah. We do it quarter, quarterly, but you know, it's so we don't forget, so we remember what He done. You know, we should be reminded of that often. Just down below that is Matthew twenty-seven, twenty-six through thirty-one. 
Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he was scorned, scorched Jesus, once he had scorned Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put on a and put on him, on him a scarlet robe. And when they had Pilate, when they had Platted. Platted, thank you, a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him, and took the reed, and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off of him, and put his own raiment on him, and led him away to crucify him. Like I said, if you got anything to add in, just don't be afraid to stop me. Jesus was denied justice. This is searching the text. Everything that happened to Jesus from the moments after Judas betrayed him was a, with a kiss was a violation of the law and order, not to mention scripture. Jesus endured three false religious trials overnight, which were followed by three civil trials that did not produce a verdict or a sentence. Pilate washed his hands in an apparent attempt to declare that he found no fault in Jesus. However, since he valued political ex expedience over justice, he commanded Jesus to be scourged, then crucified. Scourging was a cruel punishment and, and, and acted to weaken the person who would be crucified so he would not survive, sur survive into the night. Jesus was tried tied to a post and whipped with leather straps on the ends of which were tied pieces of bone and metal designed to tear through skin and tissue. Many times the victim did not survive the scourging. So, so severe was the practice. Jesus survived the scourging that was created to punish the most wicked criminals even though he was perfectly innocent. The unjust continu continued beyond his Flogging. Jesus was tr treated in the most inhumane way imaginable, as soldiers were, as soldiers who existed to uphold the law became guilty of oppress oppression and abuse in their mistreatment of the only innocent one to have ever walked the earth. An entire battalion of soldiers, which some historians estimate to be up to two hundred men, surrounded Jesus to continue this act of injustice. These soldiers stripped Jesus and put a scarlet robe on his exposed wounds across his back, forced a crown of thorns down into his head, placed a reed in his hand, and then jokingly taunted him as the king. After, they painfully, after their painful abuse of power, they ripped the robe off him, hit him in the head, spit on him, and then led him away to be crucified. This entire episode ex exhibited a gruesome display of oppression and unjust against the Son of God. The people who were expected to uphold justice, maintain order, and provide safety in the land were the very ones denying each of those to the man, to the most upstanding citizen any nation would ever know. Justice was denied our Savior. The question that goes along with that section is, is it surprising to you that Jesus was denied justice from human authorities of his day? No, I mean, they hated him, so they were looking for a way to kill him. See, I thought, I thought a, a little bit of the opposite. I mean, yeah, they were looking for a way to kill him, but at the same time, they were also strict in the way they done things, especially legally. And the fact that they went against the law and against their beliefs just to be able to kill them, you know, that was complete opposite of what they would normally do. So that that's what kind of surprised me about it. But I, I can see where Jeff's coming with that too. I mean, if you disagree, you're more than welcome to say so. Well, looking at today's politics. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Where yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the way they, to come exactly. They had the way they wanted it to come out. They, the goal was to kill him, and they were going to figure out a way to do it. Mm -hmm. It don't work out, man. 
they're all four words. Right? Yeah, exactly. Or ignore them. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? Discouraging that when you just think about that, like I said, most most men didn't even survive that scourging because that the, the bone, the metal was sitting at those that whip wrapped around his body and they would literally rip it back and it, it would cut and tear and pull and uh, the guy who who did that was an expert at inflicting the most pain as possible. You know talk about you know I think about Jesus. I, I believe he was a man's man. I you know lots of times you'll see different depictions of Jesus, but I, you know he had to be a, a man to take what he took to and, and carry the cross to Calvary. Uh, and we, you know, let's think about that a little bit. You, know, you have a lot of depictions of what Jesus looked like. I don't think he was a dainty little thing. I, I think he was a man's man that took that beating and was able to carry the cross to Calvary. When I was coming from a carpenter background, carpenter in that day was a lot different than carpenter. Oh yeah, hand, everything. And you hand. lift and bang up, and he wouldn't. He wouldn't have had enough for a bill for him, of course. It's not like you just order two by fours from the store, huh? Exactly. You carve one out yourself. So. Yeah. I don't know. I was sit there and think about it. Blacksmith at least has a shed to be in. Carpenter goes to wherever the house is getting built. All right, any other comments? All right, we'll go on to section two here. Off to the left there is more verses. We'll go ahead and read through those. It's Matthew 27, 39 through 44. And they that passed by revealed him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thou thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross, Likewise, also the church, chief priest mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross, and we will believe, believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Jesus was treated with contempt. The hatred towards Jesus extended beyond the religious and civil authorities and into the general public as Jesus hung on the cruel cross. And the most humiliating and wound, wounded, wounded position possible, Jesus endured hatred from everyone, from the highest authority in the area all the way down to the guilty criminal suffering next to him. Nearly everyone found in a... a found an opportunity to express their malice towards the Son of God. Matthew's record of what took place described those who passed by as blasphemers. These were not expressions of sympathy, empathy, or sadness. Neither were they simple, harmless expressions that can be expected given these circumstances. These were vociferous. I looked that up even. I wrote those down. I still can't figure out how to say them. The vociferous assaults that blasphemed, blasphemed the name, power, and person of the Son of God. These people who only days before were in the crowd that shouted his praises as he made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, now made fun of the man they once applauded. This episode demonstrated the fickle and evil nature of human beings. It is nearly impossible to imagine why anyone would have hated toward, would have hatred towards Jesus, who had impacted so many people and made their lives better. Remember, though, that Jesus came to introduce the kingdom of heaven to mankind, and offered Himself as the only way to access the Father in John fourteen one through six. His very presence thickened the religious system in place that had deceived many. Jesus days just days before Jesus overturned the table and cleansed the temple 
in anger at the hypocrisy of the religious leaders who made themselves wealthy by their religious manipulation of worshipers. The coming of Jesus disrupted the status quo, and deep down, people did not want to change. This is what Jesus told his church not to be surprised if the world hated them, even as they proclaimed the gospel of peace in John 15, 18, and 19. It may be difficult to imagine, but there are many people who claim to like Jesus, but secretly despise him and refuse to follow him. Seeing Jesus humiliated and confined to a cross gave everyone who secretly hated Jesus the courage to blaspheme him out loud. When people express their hatred of Jesus or their hatred of you because of your faith, it would be wise to remember the contempt Jesus experienced on the cross of Calvary. He endured unjust hatred and vitriol on our behalf. Not only that, but in the face of this hatred, Jesus did not respond with anger, but ask God to forgive them in Luke 23, 34. Off to the right, one of the thieves next to Jesus repented and, repented and trusted in him. What lesson can you learn from this? Never too late to repent. Except I tell Dad. And that was two things I got. It was, it's never too late and, until death, like you said. Once, once you're dead, you're dead. You're done. <laughs> And uh, no matter what you have done, he will still take you. you know, no matter what you've done in this life, he will still accept you into his family. So just because you feel like you're too bad of a person, you know, our look at it is, well, I've been too bad. Well, he cleanses our sins. So what God sees is completely different. And some other things in that too. He didn't have opportunity to work for his salvation. It was truly by grace. You know, he didn't or be baptized. Or be, uh, that was my next point. He couldn't be baptized. He wasn't baptized. You know, a lot of people say, well, you got to be baptized to be saved. No, he wasn't. He didn't, he didn't have an opportunity to work for his salvation. He didn't have a single good work other than to accept Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. Anyone else? Anything on this last section before we continue? All right, just down below that, Matthew 27, 46 through 50. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, or however you say that, I don't speak foreign language. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, this man calleth for Elias. And straightway, one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Jesus was forsaken by God. As Jesus suffered under the weight of our sins, darkness fell on the face of the earth for three hours in the middle of the day. This darkness was not an eclipse, but a supernatural demonstration of God's displeasure in the wickedness of man who executed his son. At about three o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus shouted with a loud voice a quotation of Psalms 22, 1, in which David exclaimed for sickness by God. I'm going to go ahead and read that real quick. I didn't look that up, but I should have. All right, Psalms 22, verse 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my mouth, of my roaring? Jesus' allowed explanation was so much, was not so much a question as to why this was happening as it was an ex, explanation of his forsakenness by God due to his bearing the iniquities there we go, of mankind in taking our sin upon himself, there must have been some sense of abandonment from the Father as 
his wrath against our sins was poured out upon his son. Isaiah wrote that God would see the anguish of his son and be satisfied since Jesus offered himself as our guilty offering in Isaiah 53, 11. The Apostle Paul explained it by writing that God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin for us, that we might become the righteous, righteousness of God in him, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. On the cross, Jesus took our sins and paid the debt owed to God on our behalf. In that great exchange, some theologians call it double in imputation by faith in Jesus Christ. He takes our sin and we receive his righteousness. For atonement to be paid by Jesus, however, he had to face the lowest moment in his life, having been forsaken by his father. We do not know what it is like to live without the benevolent presence of God in our lives. Because of Jesus' work at Calvary, no saved person should ever have to face a single day without him since salvation is offered freely as a gift by faith in Jesus Christ. Sadly, however, many refuse to repent and trust in Jesus as Savior. This will ultimately experience forsakenness by God. That Jesus faced the wrath of God for our sins made him what John called our propitiary. How do you say that? Propitiation. Propitiation. 1 John 2.2. 2. Or the payment. That satisfies a debt and brings reconciliation. reconciliation with God. Not only is Jesus the payment for our sins, but John wrote that he is also the payment for the sins of the whole world. That does not mean every person will be saved, but it means the death of Jesus paid the sin debt so that everyone can be or could be saved. Jesus paid it all, all to him we owe. Appreciation, another quick uh, definition would be acceptable sacrifice. Jesus' sacrifice, his death, was acceptable in God's sight for the payment of our sins. His propitiation for our sins was acceptable sacrifice. Off to the left, there's another question there. I really like these questions. I already went ahead and looked ahead. Next book that we go into, because we're about to finish up this one. Uh, the next one we go into is wrote by the same guy. I'm assuming it's going to have the questions too, but I like how the questions are there. They kind of get you thinking about it. How important is it that God's wrath against our sin was satisfied in the death of Jesus? It's all important. If, if it wasn't satisfied, then there still have to be a payment. But Jesus paid the debt. He paid the sin debt. God was satisfied with it. Yeah. One of the, I think that was the one thing that Jesus dreaded most. As bad as as the, the scourging was and as bad as the death on the cross would be, he knew that God would have to turn his back upon him. And when he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's I believe that that three-hour period from about noon to three o'clock when there was a darkness upon the face of the earth, what it says, is, and I don't think it was like an eclipse. You know, you have an eclipse today and you know you can still see I, I think when God turned his back on Jesus I think the lights went out I, mean, I think it was dark you ever been in a cave and the lights go off uh, you know I, I think it was like that because God turned his back upon Christ and yeah, I they thought were so. separated for the first time ever in eternity past or eternity future for that period of time as Jesus suffered for our sins because that's the thing about when a person dies and goes to hell. What's It's death, but it's eternal separation from God. D Jesus suffered that separation from God for us. I thought the same thing because if you've ever seen an eclipse, I know we had one there back in, what was it, 15, 16? It had to be 16. Oh, it was something like that. Uh yeah, it probably was 17. I worked in Nitro at the time. Uh, when it happened, we only seen a partial eclipse, but if you went down to like South Carolina, you could see the full thing. The thing was, though, there was still a ring of light around it. That's not complete darkness. And I, like Jeff said, I think it was complete darkness. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face. 
But my notes for it there was it, it's the most important. If he, like Jeff said, if he didn't accept that, then we would still have a debt to owe. So. Anything else to add? If not, we can go ahead and finish up this next section here. This will be the last section. Setting the application. Today we remember and reflect with rejoicing on the gift of salvation offered to us because of Jesus Christ. We never get to a point at which we can forget what Jesus has done for us. Even though we may have received Jesus as Savior decades ago, the events of Calvary should be brought to our remembrance often. Every time a new police academy class comes through training in our local police department, they are informed about the officers who were killed in the line of duty and educated on the events that took their lives. This education takes place over a seven-mile run as the officers to be, and many correct current officers run to the different locations where officers lost their lives. Remembering fallen officers and appreciating their sacrifices become an integral part of officer training and development. And they do this even here in Charleston when they do their classes up in South Charleston, Dunbar area, wherever it is. I think it's Dunbar Institute area. But when they do those, they still, they don't run it, but they still go over the people that's been lost in the area. There has never been a sacrifice more impactful than that of Jesus Christ. What Jesus accomplished on Calvary purchased heaven for everyone who believes in him transferring believers from darkness to light, from death to eternal life. Because of the broken body and shed blood of Christ, we have the opportunity to repent. We can find forgiveness by reconcile, be reconciled to God, be restored to our original cr created purpose, and expected to ex spend eternity with God in heaven. That last question there, we still got about 15 minutes, but we'll go ahead and ask this last question. What difference has Calvary made in your life? Salvation. He saved us from hell. He saved us from the other things that could have happened to us in this world. I mean, Jeff, he talks about how he was saved at a young age, and I was saved at a young age. I still got into some of it, but, you know, thinking about what he kept me from, you know, that's a big thing. He kept me from doing a lot of bad stuff that I easily had access to. Made us better people. All right. Any other comments? Questions? All right, if not, we'll go ahead and dismiss class here. We still got about 15 minutes, so.